Welcome to the celebration of Eucharist. Gathered for worship on this feast of God's mercy, let us praise the Lord Jesus who comes to us in word and sacrament as we sing the gathering song, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 171. Let us begin the celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we come together to celebrate the most holy Eucharistic celebration, let us recall to our mind all of our sins, asking for God's mercy, and his compassion. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray god of everlasting mercy who in very recurrence of the paschal feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn by whose blood they have been redeemed through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded from all. There was no needy person among them, for those who own property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Christ, Jesus is the Christ, is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey his commandments, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? But the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel is a reminder that we tend to remember the mistakes people make rather than focus on the good they have done. We have Thomas the Apostle, remembered for the time that he doubted. We rarely hear that tradition tells us he evangelized in Syria and Persia before going on to western and southern India. We do not spend much time reflecting on the other important times he shows up in sacred scripture. When Jesus announced that they would go to Bethany to raise Lazarus, it was Thomas the the brave, not Thomas the doubter, 
who was not concerned about the danger, and said, let us also go and die with him. His determination to follow Jesus teaches us a valuable lesson. We must be ready and willing to follow Jesus during both the good times and the bad. It's Thomas the Concerned who at the Last Supper told Jesus that they did not, did not know where Jesus was going and therefore did not know the way. Thomas is an example for us, showing that he really does not always understand Jesus. And that gives Jesus the opportunity to clarify for us that he, Jesus, is the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas's actions encourage us to speak to Jesus, to question him when we do not understand. Every time we hear these words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, we can stand beside Thomas in spirit and imagine that Jesus is speaking to us. And finally, we come to the event, today's event, for which Thomas is most known, the time he doubted. Now, we don't know where Thomas was when Jesus visited the disciples for the first time in that upper room. Perhaps he was off sulking. Sulking because he gave three years of his life to have this ministry come to a tragic end. Perhaps he was off grieving because of his love for Jesus and he was struggling to understand the reality of what happened to his dear friend. When he learned that Jesus visited the disciples in the upper room, he did not believe. He did not trust. Thomas was able to recognize him not by his facial features, but by his wounds. Trust is one of the most difficult areas of spiritual life to develop because it will only grow by doing it. When it comes to the scriptures, which the church has infallibly proclaimed are inspired by God, we do question them, and we should. We want to be sure the testimony that is there is true. How do we really know we weren't there? We didn't witness the events firsthand. Our secular world encourages us to pick and choose. Since sacred scripture is one of the ways God reveals himself to us, the church encourages us through Bible study to embrace the richness of God's revelation. Unfortunately, we sometimes challenge sacred scripture and we challenge church, church teachings. We're not willing to believe everything we see on the internet, TV, and everything we read in the paper. That seems true to us. We see it in print, we hear of it, that's true but the sacred teachings of the church, we question. But I'd like to suggest that we reverse the way we think and we evaluate the tools we use to hear God speaking to our hearts. I suggest we start digging deeper into what we, we read in sacred scripture and we forget about the media. Take time to learn. Take time to embrace God. Take time to listen to him as he speaks to our hearts through the sacred words. Media causes us to doubt, just like Thomas. They want us to doubt. Like the Pharisees, they're afraid that if we turn to God, if we let him fully into our lives, we will turn away from them, and they will lose control of their audience. If we only focus on the doubt identified in today's gospel, we miss the most important message. We miss the message of mercy. Where do we see the message of mercy? Well, first of all, we see God's mercy in the way Jesus addresses his chosen 12. These are his hand-picked apostles, the very men who abandoned him just two days before. Though they abandoned him, they abandoned him in his most difficult hour, he was not going to abandon them. Instead, he passes through locked doors, passes through their fears, through their regrets, and through their guilt, and he appears to them. He didn't give up on them. He brings them his peace, and he reaffirms his confidence in them by reaffirming their mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. We see God's mercy in Christ's reaction to the people who crucified him. Does he crush them in revenge? No. From the throne of the cross, he asks the Father's forgiveness. He sends his apostles out to tell them and the entire sinful world the world that crucified its God, that they can be redeemed and that God did not condemn them. We see the mercy of Christ in the way he spoke to Thomas. 
the way he held out his hand and revealed the wound in his side so that Thomas would no longer doubt but believe. Jesus gives the ultimate revelation of God's mercy. He makes sure the church is fully armed to communicate his message of compassion. He delegates to his apostles. He delegates his divine power to forgive sins. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the explicit institution of the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus gives his young church the Easter gift of the power to forgive sins. Jesus gave us the sacrament in which the limited, limitless ocean of God's mercy overwhelms our puny ocean of our misery. Touching Christ's wounds, like the doubter Thomas, is not necessary for the spiritual experience of sacramental forgiveness. If received in genuine contrition, with deliberate intention, the sacrament of reconciliation can be more profound than anything the senses can offer. Now, during his, during his life, Jesus gave us many examples of his mercy. When he forgave the adulterous woman, he comforted her with his mercy. When he asked the crippled man at the pool of Siloam if he wanted to be healed, he showed him compassion. When he looked into the eyes of Dismas on the cross, he embraced him with his love. When he looked into the heart of Peter who betrayed him, he let his mercy, compassion, and love immediately wash over him. On this day when we celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy, we need to make an act of the will, an act of faith, an act of hope, and an act of charity to say yes to God, to say, I will doubt no longer. I will face the challenges of life with a renewed faith. I will accept your call to be an active member of the body of Christ. I will believe because it is you who have said it. I will trust in you. I will trust in you, Lord Jesus, and in believing and trusting, I will love. That is what the Lord is asking for us today. Not to have proof, not to have anything tangible to hang on to, but to look at Jesus on the cross and ask ourselves, do I believe? And then when we gaze on the picture of divine mercy, we look right into the face of Christ and we, we repeat the words that are written at the bottom, but we mean it from our hearts. Jesus, I trust in you. Standing together as God's family, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth, of all, all things visible and, and invisible. I, I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him, him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in front of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is risen and comes to be with us in word and sacrament. Casting doubts aside, we praise our God and humbly ask for our needs and those of the world. Please respond, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Mark, all priests, deacons, and religious brothers and sisters, may they find joy and strength in this Easter season, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For our President and all world leaders, may they diligently work for peace and the dignity of all life, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all the faithful of this diocese, may we be ambassadors of mercy, ready to assist the poor, uplift the lowly, pardon the sinner, and lead others to Christ by example, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For those newly baptized and received into the church, may their faith grow strong and their love for one another increase, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For those preparing for First Eucharist and Confirmation, may they grow in love and wisdom, always seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For the sick, the homebound, the elderly and the hospitalized, for Father Bob Hall, all those named in the bulletin, and for all who need the Lord's peace and healing, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, Larry Lear, Victoria Dodson, and for all our parishioners for whom we offer this Eucharist, we pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and for our personal intentions and those written on our parish book and website. We pray. Risen Savior, hear our prayer. Sweetest Jesus, our Lord truly present in the Eucharist, be our health in mind and body, be our strength in all temptation, be our joy and peace in every trial, be our light and guide in every deed, and be our final protection in the hour of death. God of endless mercy, you sent your Son to be our resurrection and life. Through the love and mercy that raised him from the dead, hear and answer our prayers. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen one, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing at the Lamb's High Feast, number 179.
pray my dear brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church accept o lord we pray the oblations of your people and those of you are brought to new birth that renewed by confessing of your name and by baptism they may attain unending happiness through Christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you o lord but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when christ our passover has been sacrificed for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death and by raising restored our life therefore overcome with the paschal joy every land every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and ended willingly in his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me <coughs> the mystery of faith Therefore, as 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Benedict, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by the divine teaching of Jesus. Let us pray together. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
behold the lamb of god behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb lord i am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed In order to join us spiritually to the Eucharist, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.